Imagine yourself being asked by a 9 year old what is money. If the answer would be to get a bill out of your wallet and show it to him, is that really all about it? Let's have a closer look at what is money. Earlier in the history of mankind, people had to exchange goods in order to increase their living standards. Since it was often hard to reach an agreement and keep track of all the trading, pricing appeared together with money. The easiest way to define money is as an item accepted as a medium of exchange. Money falls into three main categories. Commodity money, such as gold, silver, or other precious items, fiat money, or currencies, like the US dollar or the euro, and probably the most popular form of money, and commercial bank money. Basically loans, but we will cover this topic separately in another video. In this video, we will focus on the difference between the first two categories, commodity money and fiat money. Let's therefore have a quick look at the history of money and understand where we started and how we got to where we are today. The first attempt to create money happened thousands of years ago and it was in the form of salt and shells. This failed quickly since both salt and shells were lacking one important property, durability. Gold was the next major attempt. Gold was durable and it had yet another great property. It is fungible. Fungibility means that one gram of gold has the same properties and value as another gram of gold, which makes gold interchangeable. But there was one issue with gold. It was neither easy to transact nor to safely store in big quantities. This is how the first certificates appeared. In different words, gold was held in a secure vault against a fee and the owner received a piece of paper in exchange where the exact quantity was stated. The gold could be retrieved at any time against a piece of paper. While paper was easier to carry or store than gold, there was still a problem. Dividing the paper was not that trivial. National currencies were the next major step, solving the division issue while still being backed by gold. And with the World War II getting close to an end, the elite nations created a new monetary system. All the currencies were pegged to the US dollar, making the US dollar the world's currency. Why the US dollar, you may wonder? Simple answer, because the US were owning three quarters of the world's supply of gold, which was the standard until that day. More about this coming up in a separate video. Last but not least in our short historical overview, the year 1973 is marking the probably biggest change. Nixon is decoupling the US dollar from the gold, making both the US dollar and the other currencies in the world backed by, well, nothing. This brings us to the main differences between these two types of money, value and scarcity. Besides the properties mentioned above, gold has intrinsic value. Gold can be used for its physical and chemical properties, for example in jewelry or electronics, while a currency can't. Money is just paper or plastic. A $20 bill is worth $20 only because there is at least one person in the world who believes this. Gold can be introduced to the open market only by mining. But while gold is a finite resource and mining is becoming harder and harder, issuing currency is not a difficult process at all. It's the scarcity of the item that makes the price of gold go up when measured against a not so scarce currency. Long story short, one type of money is a store of value while the other is not. In other words, it is not the value of gold going up, it is the value of the currency going down. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.